Hey everybody, so here's a million dollar question for smartphone camera fans. How does an ultra pixel camera perform when it's lacking optical image stabilization? I was a huge fan of the HTC One's camera, so let's take a look at some samples from the HTC One Mini. This is something of an unknown sensor. We've only seen it out in the wild once, and it's not anything like the insane number of five and eight megapixel shooters that Samsung has released. Starting with some outdoor scenes, the lack of image stabilization makes itself known right away. There's an unpleasant shakiness to brightly lit scenes. Also somewhat unfortunate is the camera's tendency to overexpose brightly lit scenes. You'll want to manually adjust your exposure settings when shooting in direct sun like these noonday shots. There is a good amount of detail and the video is crisp, but we're also witnessing that overactive focus which just seems to come built into HTC's camera app. After you tap the screen, the app just won't stay still and it'll keep racking focus trying to guess what you want it to focus on. There's another setting in the app you'll probably need to adjust. In the street scene, there's a good amount of dynamic range and we're still making out detail on the cars while retaining the color of the sky. I just wish the video weren't so jittery, and I'm really trying to hold the phone still here. Now our walking test, the Mini did better than I thought it would, but the shaky video combined with the app constantly hunting focus results in a pretty unpleasant shot. Few cameras can do this well handheld, but the UltraPixel camera is performing about mid-pack here as far as phones are concerned. And now a transition test. Lacking the horsepower of its big brother, the camera pulses through exposure changes. It's not nearly as bad as Windows Phone in this regard, but it's not great for an Android handset. Also, you can see evidence of the phone losing focus during the most extreme exposure changes. Thankfully, the app does recover quickly, but it gets tiresome how often it'll lose focus in the middle of a video. Some nighttime video here. The LED does a decent enough job of helping expose a dark shot. It at least helps the camera from scaling back to a lower 15 frames per second. LED lights are always a harsh bright white, but if you need the shot, it's better than nothing. You can see the slower frame rate here with the creepy gate. It helps expose a night shot, but it makes the shot look kind of choppy. Also, you can see how HTC cameras try to adjust white balance to find true white. Unlike Nokia and Samsung, which try to keep an honest feel for what the color of the scene might have been, the security light on this gate is, is actually very yellow. And you can see that in my Lumia 1020 sample video. No manufacturer is really correct here. That's more of a personal preference on how you like to shoot and on what you value in white balance. Lastly, our nighttime driving scene, scaling back to 15 frames per second, no image stabilization, and a tendency to lose focus isn't a great combo for a shot like this. The video is a little noisy, and it's hard for the camera to recover focus the numerous times it tries tracking a car. At 15 frames per second, it's just not fast enough to readjust as a car is moving. In all, the HTC One Mini is actually pretty good for the Android mid-range but it's also going up against phones like the Lumia 925. Both the 925 and the One Mini are both being sold for $100 on a two-year contract. Not to mention the Lumia 920 is still being sold, which in terms for bang for buck, absolutely crushes the Mini at $50 on a two-year contract. I like what HTC is doing with UltraPixel, but the Mini performs mid-pack at best in a market with some intense competition. As always, folks, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all on the next review.